Bill, Bill, Bill. Whoever this Bill guy is, I hate that I keep on getting this mail. What's this? Kevin? Fuck Kevin! Why am I even getting this? How come none of this mail is for me? Oh, what's this? This, this is for me. You may have already won. Alright, well I better check it out at least. Dear Skinkalink, you may have already won an all expense paid vacation to Redacted. All you have to do in order to collect this prize is to press the power button on your Xbox. Well, okay, as long as it gets this video going, I don't see how it could backfire. Bloodwake? Is now one of the Xbox launch titles? Eh, let's check it out. So, Bloodwake is a game about a vampire crashing funerals and consuming all the guests. Wait, that doesn't seem right. That actually seems like it's a pun based solely off the title. Actually, it's about boats. Yeah, boats and pirates and revenge and magical talismans and empires and oriental themes and what else? Oh yes, boats. Oh, uh, I already said that. Oops. After it was unveiled in E3 2001, this game received mixed reviews from critics and it was described as Twisted Metal on Water. At least that's what it's described in its Wikipedia. And since I've never played Twisted Metal before, I won't be using that comparison for the remainder of the review. Starting right off, the story begins with our main hero, Shao Kai, being picked up by pirates after his squadron was attacked and destroyed by a mysterious force. And let's address these cutscenes really quick. Everything is represented by these hand-drawn illustrations instead of full motion video or CG animation. I think this works because it stylizes itself from other games and fits with the Oriental themes. Also probably because early Xbox cutscenes are terrible. Terrible. Talking to you, Star Trek Shattered Universe. Plus, the drawings are very well illustrated. If they were poorly made, I'd probably prefer FMV or CG animation, even if it was awful. But this? This is alright, so good on you, game. Anyway, Shao Kai gets adopted by the pirates and then reveals that he actually knows who attacked him. His brother's forces. His brother is actually the main admiral of the Iron Empire, while Shao Kai was a lieutenant. Kind of a large rank disparagement there. That's like saying Zeus is the king of the gods, but his son Hercules is Kevin Sorbo. Wait a minute. This is a script for Let There Be Light 2! Why do I even have this? So how about we move on to some actual gameplay then? No? Another cutscene where we meet Shao Kai's first mate, Ahmed? Okay, great. We're also introduced to Gamal. I mean, Scarface. He is drawn holding a knife and says, Just because you caught Sing's eye, don't think you're one of us. Man's got to earn the right to run with the Shadow Clan. Yeah, he's so a traitor. <sighs> oh, wait, we're not supposed to know that he's a traitor yet. Um, well, he's still a traitor. He's portrayed as stereotypically as possible. The only thing more obvious would be... You can't be one of us, kid. I know, because I am Benedict M. Arnold. Here's a note from your enemy telling me so. Yeah. After all that, we're thrown into the first mission. We have a basic speedboat with chain guns on it. And all we do is blow shit up. Blowing up the enemy boats, blow up fuel tanks, more boats, that sort of thing. So, how about the gameplay? Well, it's actually quite satisfying. Considering we're piloting a boat, it actually feels like driving a boat. It could be a little floaty here and there. Heh <laughs> floaty. But that's understandable in this kind of game. You could pick up health and ammo crates, and ramming other boats can be very satisfying. Okay, only if your boat is bigger than the enemy boat. Otherwise, you kind of bounce around like a rubber duck in a bathtub. So after we successfully destroy all the sampans, it's time for mission two. And okay, I've been trying to ignore this, but Shao Kai's voice acting, is it intentionally over the top? Looks like my sampan slam did the trick. He sounds like he's paying homage to Christian Slater. 
Also, I talk like this to hide the fact that I don't actually have a personality. But that's okay, because reasons. Despite Shao Kai trying to sound intense all the time, the rest of the voice acting is pretty well done. Although there are times they sound like they're reading their lines like it's a school play, Lung Khan, aka Shao Kai's brother, is also pretty over the top also, but that's probably because he's the villain. Mission 2 has us going around picking up treasure chests, which are conveniently located on the top of ramps. Which means, in order to get them, you have to steer correctly and hit it just right, or else you fly off in a direction you don't want. And if you land on dry land, well, you sit there for a bit until the game decides to kill you. Noice! Also, this mission introduces us to secondary weapons, which use ammo. This time, it's rockets, but there's also cannons, torpedoes, and mines. Rockets fire three at a time and are great against ships and land targets. They even home in on locked-in targets. Cannons are fantastic against ships and blast them very forcefully. Torpedoes obliterate ships and sometimes cause them to be launched into the air like a toy. And they can also take out mines. Mines are dumb. They poop out of your ship and will indiscriminately explode on anything. Also, if the water is rough, there's a decent chance you'll launch a mine and it will land on your boat, blowing you up. I guess the equivalent to that would be throwing a lawn dart straight up in the air and trying to catch it with your teeth. Back to the main story, what I didn't really mention so far was that the first two missions are against a faction known as the Jade Kingdom and they apparently don't like the Shadow Clan Pirates. <sighs> Maybe it's a ninjas versus pirates thing. But wait, wouldn't the Shadow Clan Pirates technically be ninjas in this universe? Nah, that would never happen. Pirates as ninjas. Pfft. Anyway, the third mission has Achmed stealing a boat that's fully loaded and complete with auto cannons. And the goal is to do a night raid to impress the leader of the Shadow Pirates, Ped Zhang. This mission is pretty much the first mission, but at night and with better guns. But now it's time to really prove our worth to these pirates by traversing the gauntlet. Okay, so it's not so much a gauntlet as much as it is a racetrack. Just get to the end before time runs out and stay within the boys. Wow, this isn't hard at all. In fact, better music is in order. Hit it, David Wise! You Nearing the end, Gamal tries to sink us because we're gonna beat his precious best time but I blow on past without any issue. Okay. Any doubt that Gamal isn't a traitor should be out the window by this point, but apparently no one else saw that. Ped Zang, Gamal tried to murder me. I'm sure it's nothing, just boys having fun. Seriously? I've known Gamal for 20 years. I've never seen him do something like this. You're on your own, kid. I'm not gonna draw the parallels between this and sexual assault. You've got to do that yourself. So with Shao Kai being a proper member of the Shadow Clan, Act 2 is where the war between the Shadow Pirates and the Jade Kingdom start to pick up. Our new position gets us a new ship, a catamaran, which has better armaments and armor. It's also the best ship because it's featured on the cover of the game, just like the Iron Helm in Skyrim. Act 2 starts with an escort mission. Oh! My favorite! Then there's a mission where you protect the village from your brother's forces and it has one of the two ships that attack Shao Kai's squad, the Basilisk. Sink them and then it's back to the Jade Kingdom War. It just kind of seems like the brother revenge thing is just a side quest right now, because for the next several missions, it's mostly going against the Jade Kingdom, with occasional Iron Fleet thrown into the mix. So in the interest of moving things along, here's a condensed version of the story. The Jade Kingdom attacks the Shadow Clan, the Shadow Clan strikes back, and then the pirates find a new home. And at this point, Shao Kai starts collecting pieces of a magical talisman that is said to have some sort of destiny with it. Then the Jade Kingdom finds a new base and attacks. And attacks with suicide bombers. Lovely. Also, by this point, we've gotten a new boat that's almost insanely overpowered. Earlier there were these eel-class ships that had lightning guns, and this new ship I got also uses this weapon. It doesn't have much range, but when it hits, woohoo, it's a thing of beauty. Power overwhelming. Throw a soap cup. You 
destroy! Annihilate! We hit the Jade Kingdom one last time, get a talisman piece, and then finally they call for a truce. Which, we have to protect the truce conference from the Iron Empire ships, including the other ship that destroyed Shao Kai's squad, the Octopus. Sink all those bastards in an alliance forms between the Jade Kingdom and the Shadow Clan. And then there's a mission that's both kind of fun, but it's bullshitty. What do you mean, bullshitty isn't a real word? Of course it is! Before the main assault on this port, you have to go in with a speedboat, which, if you recall, is a weak but fast boat. You're supposed to go in, grab four chests of gold, which are hard to do because they are accessed via jumping ramps, and then make it out alive. Well, there's so many mounted guns and ships in this port that that is nearly impossible. So the most effective method is to meticulously target and destroy every gun and ship at an extreme distance. We're talking can't see the target because of rendering issues distance. Luckily, you also get auto cannons, which are a lot more accurate than chain guns, and you also get the lightning gun for if you would get too close to an enemy. But this whole process takes forever, and a small slip up can and probably will kill you. Two or three good hits on your boat can kill you, so that's fun. So after the dash and grab on the port, the Shadow Clan base gets attacked by Iron Fleet forces at the absolute most inopportune time. If only we knew who the traitor was who traitored his way into being a traitor. Oh no! I wonder who it could be. Turns out they think it was Brana, the leader of the Jade Kingdom. Yeah, he's a traitor, obviously. Ah uh, yes, uh, I'll have the red herring, please. I, I hear it's good. This menu is huge! Then, disguised as an Iron Fleet ship, we destroy some convoys, and we're rewarded with another new boat. A Razorback torpedo boat, auto cannons, rockets, torpedoes, and mines. Oh, I think I'm in love. We have got to get you out more. Uh, there's nothing I could really say about that. Is, is there a word for boatophilia? Shipiality? The love boat? After scouring your brain of a man's raucous lovemaking to a boat, the assault on the port can commence. We blow up everything that we already destroyed in the previous mission, and then some, then travel further up the river to get to the fourth talisman piece, which is now revealed to be some sort of magic shield. Then we just barely escape Khan's grasp. Also, he has some sort of magic weapon that is giving him a huge advantage over all of his enemies. Now, where have I heard that plot device before? Mm. And then Lady Helen. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention her until now. She's Ped Zhang's second in command and Shao Kai's love interest in the game because of course she is. She reveals that she was a spy sent to infiltrate Lung Khan's organization and then was found out and forced to be a slave. Until Lung's informants found me out. Then I was his prisoner. Chained, tortured, and worse. Ugh. What the fuck, game? When I drew parallels to sexual assault, I didn't actually think you were gonna throw rape into the mix. And then they suck face. Magical. So, there's an escort mission, followed by finding out Gamal was actually a traitor. Oh man, I had no idea! A traitor was a traitor? Duh! So with the next a weakest ship... We've gotta make it challenging somehow! We infiltrate Khan's base and kill Gamal, but then we're captured. Crap! We don't have a chance! We have no choice but to surrender. Ah, little brother. Tell me, how have you been? Come closer, I'll show you. And then they kiss. Nah, actually Lung Khan spouts a long monologue about using the shield to conquer the world and blah blah blah. I also would like to point out that they hold on to this drawing of these two a bit too long. It's still nicely drawn, but I feel like it would be better if they had another picture to go with this monologue, like from a different angle. Just food for thought. So Shao Kai gets sent into a gladiator type situation and fights his way out and then trades in that piece of shit catamaran with the hydroplane, which is the final boat of the game. 
Then it's time to recover the talisman, which is being transported on a ship that is totally vulnerable, and it's stupid for Lung Khan to even let it out of his sight. Idiot. Another major assault on Khan's port later, and the final talisman is captured and secured. Now it's time to assault the big bad boss ship, the dragon. The trick here is that you want to be hit by the magic weapon and then redirect it back to the dragon. Or if you want, you can use it to destroy some of these other ships. I died a lot on this level, but I finally got it down and seriously, it sank, but I died too. Okay. So again, I got it to sink with me not dying. Novel concept. So now, with the dragon destroyed and the Iron Fleet defeated, Lung Khan speeds away like a little bitch. Wait, that wasn't the last level? Damn, there's still one more level. And this level takes the bullshit meter and cranks it to 11. You have to navigate through a labyrinth of waterways, avoiding mines and destroying some of the toughest boats in the game, as well as gun turrets, to make it all the way into the bowels of Lung Khan's fortress. You have to become an expert at spotting mines and taking them out with your wave gun or torpedoes. And if you mess up, you might as well start the mission over. Lung Khan himself isn't too tough, but by the time you get to him, you're battered and bloodied and desperate for health and ammo. But once you sink him, that's the game. And then the first animated cutscene of the game happens. There's some sequel baiting and then Shao Kai sails off into the sunset. And it's kind of a shame that there's not a sequel for this game because I really liked it. But I think the fact that it had mixed reviews, and not a lot of people seem to have played it, made a sequel for this game rather undesirable. The game plays really well, and the story, albeit heavily cliched, is still fun and interesting. I only played the easiest difficulty, and it was still challenging. And there's also a multiplayer mode where you could fight your friends. It was always kind of funny because my friends who never played before wouldn't be able to know which ships were good and then choose like the speedboat and then I'm here with the devil boat and just obliterate them. Ah, fun times, but wait, isn't that part of the reason why I don't have that many friends anymore? Oh well. In any case, I would recommend playing this game and if you could get it for cheap, go for it. But for me, I'm going to go finish this joke that I started at the beginning of the video. Bye. Ugh. 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 White, white rum by it's Why Why do I even have white rum? Yeah. Wow. That, oh. <clears throat> okay, that wasn't very good. It's not the worst I've ever had. Holy crap. Ugh. Sheesh. I I just came up with, with that. It's like... Right, I just have what the fuck game. I didn't actually put that in. I decided to put that in there because I regret everything. <laughs>